the inner peace. 1 Timothy 6 and 8. It says, And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Amen. It doesn't mean we won't have a hunger pain, but it does mean that God will meet our every sincere, true need. If the Christian fears the future, then he is not trusting in God and his promises. God commands us to sing and rejoice as we see the final hour approaching. He wants us to sing and rejoice and be happy about it. If you've never accepted, fully accepted God's salvation and fully trusted his word, you're not a child of God. Well, that's a cruel thing to say. Well, it's the truth. I told him to somebody a while ago. I told him about a former relative of his and how he's very religious. He comes up with all these religious things, you know, like how to wear your hair and how to wear your skirts and the length you need to wear your skirts and things like this. And, but yeah, he'll turn right around and go into the, doing the dope thing. People, that doesn't work. It doesn't work. And I just told him, I said, you know, you can't, you can't judge people, but I can tell you this. Love sometimes is not enough. You can love somebody from near to the nth degree, and sometimes that's not enough. They have to have a desire to want to change. They have to have a desire in their inner being to want inner peace. You can feed somebody all day long. It's not going to help them if they don't have inner peace. But talking about hunger, we need to be hungry for the word of God. We need to be hungry for that. When you're hungry for the word of God, then you've got the peace that God's trying to give to you. Amen? And that's where we need to be. We need to be in that position. And I don't think we ever get to that position where we're so much far in advance that we don't ever need it anymore. That'll never happen until we get to glory. <laughs> Amen? With our glorified body. <clears throat> if you don't trust God completely, you might think that what you see happening is just an accident or unusual. No. The reality is that mankind cannot improve anything because mankind is not in control. God is. Amen. Bottom line is we need to stop playing around with God. And I know the people out there listening who play around with God and they just say, well, I think I'm okay. Well, you need to not think it. You need to know it. And you need to realize that God has promised bad, but he's promised good. He's promised a blessed hope. He's promised judgment. Jeremiah 29, 13 says this, And God said, And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Amen. Paul tells us in Romans that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Which goes back to the thing of him mingling with sinners. He did not come to save the ones who were already saved. He came to save the ones who were sick and lost. So he said, while you were yet sinners, because he knows you weren't right to begin with, he came and sacrificed himself for those people. That's for everybody. So he covers every sin, past, present, and future for anybody, whoever, wherever they are. Amen. Whatever has happened. Whatever has gone on. He doesn't look at your faults as much as he sees the need that you have. I love that song that we used to sing a lot. It said, he looked beyond my fault. And saw my need. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. And that's what it is. So my question this morning is, are you going to be ready when the trumpet sounds? We need to be sure that we are. We need to be sure that we're ready. Amen. And I want us to be encouraged to know that God has given us provision. He's given us the whole, he's pretty much laid everything out for us, what's going to happen in the future. He hasn't told us the exact date, but we know what's going to happen. Amen? And we know it's coming soon. And like I said a while ago, we've been teaching and preaching a lot of the end times, and a lot of people don't do that, and I don't know why. I guess maybe they don't are really, not really sure of it, or maybe they don't know how to understand it. But all we need to understand is that God has said he has given us a blessed hope. He can make the church ready for rapture. We can't. He does. He makes the church ready. Amen. So I want us to be prepared this morning, and I want us to be encouraged to know that, that uh, he will bless us, he will be with us, he will help us, 
And I want us just to bow our heads this morning in just prayer and, and just ask that, that God would speak to the hearts. Lord, we're just asking you right now that you would speak to our, the hearts of the ones who are listening this morning, Lord, and that you would just help the ones, the Lord, if, they're not in, if there's anyone there that is not ready to meet you for the rapture, I pray this morning that you would be with them, that you would give them that desire, that you would speak to their hearts, help them to understand that all they need to do is to admit their sins, ask for repentance, believe that you are Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. They need to believe that you came in the flesh to die for the sins of mankind. They need to believe, Lord Jesus, that you are here, that you are the healer, that you are the one who is able to to meet our needs, that you are the one who is able to give us eternal life, to give us the glorified body, Lord, to give us the, a chance to be with you in eternity. And we just ask this morning, Lord Jesus, that you would just be with each and every one today. Be with the ones, Lord, who do believe in you. Lord, be with them and encourage them. Help them, Lord, to keep looking up, for the redemption does is very near. Help us, Lord Jesus, to depend upon you for every single thing that we do, everything that we go through in our lives. We just ask this morning that you would do that. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus and for your glory. Amen. Amen. I want uh, Brother Gene to come up and dismiss you in prayer. But I would encourage you to be here Wednesday night for the lesson on the rapture of the church. And to just um, keep your mind and your heart set and be encouraged in what he's given to us, what he's given the promise to us for. Amen. I pray the Lord bless you and keep you and all your family, children, and loved ones, and that his head stay high and strong around each and every one and helps you to keep all your faith. And we thank you, Jesus, for these things. In your name we pray. Amen.